Welcome to this lesson to help you learn English with the news. We're going to read a news article together, and you're going to learn a lot of advanced vocabulary, complex sentence structure, advanced grammar, and even correct pronunciation directly by reading this article with me. Welcome back to J4's English Training. Of course, I'm Jennifer, and this is your place to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to our article. Today we're talking about Tokyo, so let me read the headline. Tokyo is so crowded, the government is paying families to leave. Now you have a visual image of the word crowded, so you can understand what this adjective means. Crowded is when you have a space and there are many people, many, many people in that space. So you can see this space right here and there are many people. So that's what the whole city of Tokyo looks like when we say crowded. So this is our adjective. Now notice there is a part of this adjective that's necessary for grammar to form the sentence correctly. And that is our verb to be, because you need to say something, Tokyo, the city, the restaurant, the mall, for example, something is crowded. So if you're referring to more than one thing, for example, the stores, there are multiple stores. The stores were crowded. What verb tense is that in? The stores were crowded. So I have my verb to be conjugated with my subject, which is plural, the stores, they. And what verb tense is this? Well, this is, of course, the past simple. So I could say the stores were crowded yesterday, which means there were many people in those stores. So what about your city? Is your city crowded? You can share that in the comments to practice that new word, your new adjective. Now notice the pronunciation crowded, crowded. So we have those two syllables, crowded, crowded. Let's continue on. Japan is offering to pay families to move out of its overcrowded capital in an effort to revitalize countryside towns and boost the falling birth rate. Okay, so Japan, of course, they're talking about the government of Japan will give you money if you leave Tokyo. So that's what move out of. You move out of a location. So when you include the noun, you need the preposition of, and that simply means leave, but leave permanently. We use this with kids when they become adults and they leave their parents' home to have their own home. So you might say, I moved out when I was 19 years old. So I left my parents' home permanently. I moved out. You don't have to use this just with your parents' home. You could use this with any home you're currently in. So the location you're currently in, no matter what that location is, you can use this. For example, next month, I'm moving out. So it could just be out of my current residence and I'm leaving it permanently. Now, if notice I didn't include the location, if I include the location, I need the preposition of next month, I'm moving out of my apartment and I'm moving into a condo or a house, for example. So that's when you go to your new location, you move into a house. So you have your article and when you include the noun, you need the preposition of. So Japan will give you money if you leave Tokyo, if you move out of Tokyo, because it's not just crowded, it's overcrowded. So when you add the prefix over, this implies too much too much of the 
adjective or of the noun or whatever follows. Because I could use a verb, for example. I slept. (laughs) I slept. Very simple, right? I slept. Now, if I add I overslept, it means I slept too much. I slept too much. So I could say I worked yesterday, which is neutral in emotion. I worked yesterday. I overworked yesterday. So now this neutral sentence, I worked yesterday, it becomes more of a negative. I overworked yesterday. I worked too much. So by adding over to our adjective crowded, it's saying it's too crowded, too crowded, too crowded. So it's in this case for the adjective, it's simply a way of intensifying that adjective too crowded capital. Tokyo is, of course, the capital of Japan. In an effort to, that's just saying the reason why, in an effort to, in order to revitalize countryside towns. So a countryside town is just a town outside of a major urban area. So maybe you have to drive 30, 40, 50 minutes outside of the city to get to the countryside town. So revitalize, this implies that the countryside towns now are not very vibrant. Vibrant. Vibrant means there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of life there. There's a lot of people living there. There's a lot of work there. There's a lot of activities there, a lot of community there. So In the past, the towns were vibrant, very lively. People moved to the major capitals, the major cities, urban areas. So now those towns are not vibrant, not lively. So they have to revitalize. So bring that vibrancy, bring that aliveness back. So to... Bring the vibrancy back. Remember, vibrancy is just that energy, the aliveness within a town. And boost falling birth rates. So the birth rates are going down. They're falling, right? They're going down. So to boost them simply means to increase them. So it's saying to try to get people to have more kids, right? Because if the birth rate is falling and you want to boost it, how do you do that? By having more kids. So this means to increase, to increase, to boost. Okay, let's continue on. Starting in April, families in the Tokyo metropolitan area, including those headed by single parents, will be eligible to receive 1 million yen per child if they move to less populated areas across the country, according to a spokesperson from the central government. All right. So starting in, of course, this will begin in April. Notice our gerund verb here, starting in. So that is a nice way to begin your sentence. Alternatively, you could say the, what what are they saying this is? I'll just say the new plan, the new plan to give families money to leave Tokyo. The new plan will start in April. So this is using it in the the future simple. And then I can just take my gerund verb to mean the same thing. So this is the future simple. I have my will and then my base verb start. So we have will plus base verb. But notice here, 
I have my gerund verb, which is a nice advanced way to form this sentence, gerund, verb in I-N-G, starting in April. Okay, those headed by, this isn't a very common vocabulary word that you'll use in your speech, I imagine, but it simply means families that have one parent. So a single parent family is a family with only a mother or only a father. So that is a single parent family, single parent family. So let me write this for you. Of course, this is very common. And the reason may be because of divorce. So the, the couple divorced, they're no longer together. Or perhaps there was a death. One of the parents died. So a single parent family or household. Sometimes they call that a household, a family, only a mother or only a father, but not both. Okay. So only a mother or only a father. And headed is just another way of saying that parent leads the family. They're in charge of the family. So you can understand what headed by means. So for example, you might see this more in a business co context. The company was headed by a woman was led by. So to be headed by is another way of saying to be led by. Now notice this is in the passive form and that's why I'm using my verb to be and it's in the ED form, to be headed by. I could say a woman headed the company, a woman led the company. But honestly, this is not very common. I'm just explaining for the sake of this article, but I would suggest using led by because it's a lot more common. So I'm just going to put led by, led by. Okay. So to be eligible, to be eligible to do something, it simply means that you are able to because you meet a specific criteria. So in this case, what's the criteria? You must live in Tokyo. So far from what we know, this is the only criteria. You must currently live in Tokyo and be willing to move to a small town, a countryside town. So that is the eligibility criteria. So that's the noun form. So if you're applying for maybe a visa in another country, you want to know what's the eligibility criteria. You're applying for a loan. You're applying for a mortgage. What's the eligibility criteria? Eligibility criteria. And that's just the verb form is to be eligible. So it's possible that you you're not eligible for some reason. And they could say, sorry, you're not eligible. So this is our verb to be, and then I'm just making it negative. Sorry, you're not eligible for this loan. Okay, so the eligibility criteria is they must be willing to move to less populated. So this could be another way of saying less crowded areas, crowded. Populated is just referring to the population, right? How many people live in a specific area? That's the population. So less populated area, that is an area with less people. Less populated area is an area with fewer people living there. 
So I'm not at this point, I'm not sure if you need to have children right now because it says that they will receive money per child. It doesn't say that they will receive money for themselves as the parent. So maybe the eligibility criteria is you must have a child and be willing to leave. I'm not sure. Okay, let's continue on. The incentives apply to children aged under 18. Yes, now we have our answer. So I know the eligibility criteria, this money is not available for the adults. It's for families with children, which makes sense. The incentives apply to children aged under 18. So that is part of the eligibility criteria because you can't be 19 or dependents 18 and over if they're still attending high school. Okay, so you can be 19 if you're attending high school. Maybe you started high school late, your birthday is late in the year, or you had to repeat a year. So if you're still in high school. All right, the incentive. And in this case, an incentive is a noun. This is a noun. And I know it's a noun because I have my article here, right? The incentive. N is conjugated in the plural. So this is a noun. And an incentive is something such as a, a reward. In this case, it's a financial reward. It doesn't have to be financial. It could be something like a a company car or an extra vacation day. So it's just a reward, some reward that will influence your behavior. So a reward offered to you to get you to do something specific. So that's, I'll write that out for you. A reward offered to you to get you, to convince you, influence you to do something specific. Without the incentive, why would I leave Tokyo and move to a small town? There's no incentive. There's no incentive. With the incentive, I might think, well, $7,000, almost $8,000. That's a lot of money and that's per child. If I had four kids, I don't know. That's quite a lot of money, right? That could go a long way in a small town. So let me show you how I use that in the negative. Cause I said, why would I move to a small town? There's no incentive for me to move to a small town. So without the financial reward, without receiving this money, there's no incentive for me to move to a small town. So this is used a lot in workplace situations because I might say, well, there's no incentive for me to work late. I don't receive extra money if I work late. So why would I? So that's why companies will give you bonuses or give you something like a, a prize, a free lunch. If you do something specific, that's the incentive, but you might complain, oh, there's no incentive for me to do something. So that's a good noun for you in a workplace situation, especially if you are a manager or a leader because you want to incentivize your team. All right, let's continue on. It's not the first time the government has tried to use financial incentives. Remember I said that an incentive is just a reward. It's not always financial. It could be a extra vacation day or a free phone, for example, or it could simply be something simple like a, a plaque that you put on your wall that says great job could be something like that. But now they're specifying financial incentive. So it's just an adjective to give more information about what type of incentive. 
It's not the first time the government has tried to use financial incentives to encourage people to leave. Remember, that's the purpose of an incentive to try to get people to do something. Encourage is another way of simply saying to get. <laughs> it's a more formal way of saying to get people to leave. But this plan is more generous at three times the amount currently offered. Okay. So they're saying right now the incentive is almost 8,000. So before it was what, 2,600 or so. So it was three times less than it is now. So you have, it was 7,700 <laughs> divided by three. I don't know what that is. You can let me know. <laughs> and that was the three times less. So if the incentive was only, let's say, $2,500, maybe that, that wasn't enough to actually incentivize someone. It wasn't enough. The incentive was too small. So they increased it. They increased it by three times. Let's continue on. For decades, people across Japan have migrated to its urban centers seeking job opportunities. Tokyo is the country's most populous city with roughly 37 million residents. So in this case, when you say most populous, it's not actually saying it's crowded. It's just saying the city with the most people. So remember population, populace, it's the number of people who live in a city. Now maybe 37 million isn't crowded because it could be that the geographical space is so big that 37 million can comfortably live in that space. So just because something is highly populated, it doesn't necessarily mean it's crowded. Remember, crowded has to be when there's a small space or not small, any size of space and a lot of people in that space. Let's continue on. But this migration pattern combined with Japan's rapidly aging population has left rural towns with fewer and fewer residents, as well as millions of unoccupied homes. So the migration pattern, this is just the fact that people are leaving small towns and going to the larger urban centers, mainly the capital cities, the major cities. So that's why they need to revitalize the small towns. So rapidly aging population rapidly, of course, is something that happens very quickly. So Japan's population is aging very quickly. So you have to change the sentence structure a little bit, but it means very quickly, of course. So we already know there are fewer and fewer residents in those rural towns. Now, unoccupied homes... Well, I think this is obvious, hopefully, but when you have an occupied home, but then if you put an un in front of it as a prefix, then it means not in, in this case. So not occupied. So if it's not occupied, it means nobody is living there. Nobody is living there. Another term is vacant. Vacant is nobody living there. You see this a lot with hotels. Hotels will say no vacancy, which means there's no space because vacant means there's nobody living there. Now in a hotel, you don't live there. You just stay there because it's temporary. But if there's no vacancy, it means there's no space because vacant means space. So there is space. Nobody is living there or for hotels, it would be 
staying there. Living is permanent and staying is temporary. And that's why we use stay with hotels and live with your home. So that's unoccupied homes and that's for hotel. Hotel, so no vacancy means no rooms available. Let's continue on. Meanwhile, in major cities, space has rapidly run out and prices have skyrocketed. Tokyo is consistently one of the world's most expensive cities to live in, ranking fifth globally in 2022. So we already looked at rapidly. Remember, this is an adverb, so it comes before our verb. Space has rapidly run out. So to run out, this is a phrasal verb, to run out. And this is when you no longer have something specific. So another way of saying it is to have zero, to have zero. So for example, I could say, we ran out of ink. So let's say I'm trying to print a document and I can't. Oh no, we ran out of ink. This means we have zero ink. We use this a lot with time. So you might say, actually, this is a very good one. So think of it in this context of time. We couldn't discuss the proposal because we ran out of time. So we have zero time. That's what it just means when you get to zero. So you no longer have time. We ran out of time. So space has run out. There's none left. There's zero space, right? Prices have skyrocketed. I think the image of this skyrocketed. So the price was here, let's say $100,000. It skyrocketed to $500,000. So it increased quickly. That's what I would say skyrocketed. Increased quickly. I think a lot of people are seeing this with house prices right now. A lot of people are seeing this with grocery prices. The price of groceries has skyrocketed. And it is an, an increase in price, but quickly increase. Now you could put something specific. The price of milk has skyrocketed. So you can use a general category, groceries, or you can use a specific item. Notice the pronunciation skyrocketed, rocketed, skyrocketed, skyrocketed. So that could be one of the reasons why you accept the incentive the financial incentive, and you move out of Tokyo into one of the smaller towns to revitalize that small town. And that is the end of our article. A lot of great vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation in this article. So now what I'll do is I'll read the article from start to finish so you can focus on my pronunciation and practice along with my pronunciation. Tokyo is so crowded, the government is paying families to leave. Japan is offering to pay families to move out of its overcrowded capital in an effort to revitalize countryside towns and boost the falling birth rate. Starting in April, families in the Tokyo metropolitan area, including those headed by single parents, will be eligible to receive 1 million yen, $7,700 per child if they move to less populated areas across the country, according to a spokesperson from the central government. The incentives apply to children aged under 18 or dependents 18 and over if they're still attending high school. 
It's not the first time the government has tried to use financial incentives to encourage people to leave, but this plan is more generous at three times the amount currently offered. For decades, people across Japan have migrated to its urban centers seeking job opportunities. Tokyo is the country's most populous city with roughly 37 million residents. But this migration pattern, combined with Japan's rapidly aging population, has left rural towns with fewer and fewer residents, as well as millions of unoccupied homes. Meanwhile, in major cities, space has rapidly run out and prices have skyrocketed. Tokyo is consistently one of the world's most expensive cities to live in, ranking fifth globally in 2022. Amazing job with this lesson. Now, you can look in the description or look in the comment section below to find the link where you can download the free lesson PDF that summarizes everything we learned in this lesson. And if you found this lesson helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4esenglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to help you speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying!